How precise do we need to be? Now, there's obviously different reasons people will go take the time to learn about a subject. Sometimes we're trying to learn about something new. Sometimes we're trying to learn about something that we already know about. We're trying to deepen our knowledge or our understanding. We may just enjoy the subject and enjoy whoever the instructor is and like hearing their take on things. I think in some ways, one of the most satisfying experiences is when we come across something we're not looking for that causes us to evaluate or think about something that we already held as being true. When we're forced to think about something we believe or something we feel very strongly about, I, I think that can be very healthy. Sometimes that'll cause us to completely reevaluate where we stand on something and take a different approach to it. Sometimes it'll help, actually help to strengthen how we feel. Now, what I'm going to talk about today is not a particularly complicated subject. In fact, I think it's fairly simple. A lot of times when I teach, when I present things, some of the feedback I'll get is whatever I was talking about was common sense. And usually when I hear that, it is not a compliment. It's someone, I think there's a tendency when people decide something is common sense to dismiss it because people are often looking for profound things if they're learning. They, they want something new. They want something fresh. That's human nature. To an extent, I relate to that. But I think we're at a point where we desperately need common sense. Common sense is important, and it's an interesting thing to hear someone say that something is common sense when it's something they're not applying to their life or their business or their relationships or what have you. So I just encourage you not to dismiss anything, not just what I'm talking about, but don't dismiss something just because it's simple or because it's not something new. If you read very much literature, if you look at history, you can go back as far as you want. Humans really haven't changed. We can talk about how societies change or how they cycle, but for the most part, humans are still doing the same ridiculous things they were all through recorded history. So I think simple is, we've got to get the symbol down before we can even worry about things that are more complex. Now, for me, I really like precision. Um, I am not a generalist. I like to be very specific about a lot of the things that I do, particularly when it comes to language. One of the reasons for this is because I grew up in the era when the single word dude was a complete sentence. Depending on where you put the inflection, how long you made the word, how short you made the word, your body posture, other teenagers understood what you meant when you just said the word dude. If you're anywhere close to my generation, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not from my generation, don't let that happen to you. So the quote today is from Thomas Sowell in Basic Economics, quoting. John Maynard Keynes. So it's a quote of a quote. And the quote is, it is better to be generally right than precisely wrong. So if we look at the beginning of that statement and the end of that statement, I absolutely agree with the end of it. It's never good to be precisely wrong. When we're precisely wrong, we can ruin our lives, we can ruin relationships, we can ruin careers, we can ruin other people's lives. So obviously we never want to be precisely wrong. Being generally right is a little bit tricky. Now, overall, I agree with the statement, and it caused me to really just kind of sit down and, and think about that quote and how I can apply that to daily life. Because, again, I really like precision, particularly with language. As an example, in my strength and conditioning career, a strength coach that I've never met named Alan Cosgrove made a statement one time that within the strength and conditioning community, most strength coaches who argue with each other about all kinds of things agree on 90% of the subject. And I, I think that's a, there's layers to that. It's an interesting comment. I believe what he was trying to do is find kind of a, a commonality between coaches for good discussion, which I think is valuable. But it brings up a couple different things. One, I think he's right. We do agree on most things. However, I think in some cases that means that this is where this this is where this splits a little bit. I think in some cases, if we agree on ninety percent and we disagree on ten percent, in strength and conditioning in particular, we don't all get the same results. So I feel like that means that ten percent is very important. So it really comes down to the subject, what you're talking about, so on and so forth. Um, now, I think most of the time, even if we're talking about strength and conditioning, most of the time for the general public, 
I think that if you get it 90% right, you're solid and you're going to be, you're going to be great. You don't need to worry about that 10% that might be a little bit different. If you're dealing with competitive athletes, sometimes that 10% is critical. And just a real simple, easy example, if you've got a pitcher in baseball, you know, the difference between 95 miles an hour on a fastball and 85 miles an hour on a fastball, so that's, you know, right in there around 10%, that can be the difference between playing in the, minor, in the major leagues and being, having your entire career in the minor leagues. So sometimes that 10% is a deal breaker. Sometimes it's also minutia and we shouldn't focus on the 10%. So now, depending on what you do and what you're passionate about, you can take this statement of it's better to be generally right than precisely wrong and consider how it affects you on a daily basis. All right, so a lesson from economics that applies to daily life. It is better to be generally right than precisely wrong. Go read a book.